Hey, this is RJ May, and you're watching Mr. Mario 2011. Hey, what is going on, everyone? It is me, Mr. Mario, and yes, I'm... Okay, you know what? I'll be honest. This is probably going to be one of the last times I wear these hats. Uh, I love them, don't get me wrong, but it is getting hot outside. It is May and summer. It's finally feel like spring or summer or whatever it is. And I'll be honest, I'm a little hot in this hat right now, but I wanted to wear this because I still like wearing these hats. And at the same time, I actually picked the Mordecai one as well because the last time I made a video addressing this, which was my PS4 versus Xbox One video, if you have like an extra like 20, 25 minutes and you want to catch up, I'd recommend checking that out, by the way. But I was wearing this hat. So today, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about something kind of similar. We're going to be talking about gaming. And I'm making this right now because it's been about six months, in my opinion, since the next gen has been here. Uh, the reason why I'm basing it off that is because in 2012, the Wii U came out. And then in November of 2013 yeah that's it november of 2013 the playstation 4 and then the xbox one came out uh once all three consoles hit the market that is when i felt like next gen was here so it's been almost six months and i kind of wanted to do you know a six month report and you know just tell you all what i think of these new systems and now i actually have all of them thankfully but what i think of them and for people who keep asking what system they should get or if they should get a system i'm going to answer everything right here so first off, I actually have another video, and don't worry, you don't need to go this one, but I did another video where it was consoles versus PC, specifically next gen, and I covered the Wii U, the PS4, the Xbox One, but that was before the consoles had come out, and that was, you know, PC is PC, whatever it is. But I had covered that because a lot of people were deciding, should I spend $500 upgrading my PC, or should I get an Xbox One or a PlayStation 4, what should I do? So I made a whole commentary about that, you know, explaining what type of gamer you might be, and your reasons for getting them and whatnot. But now that systems are out, I've had time to play with all of them, and I do have opinions on them that I'd like to share. So, first off, should you invest in a next-gen system right now? I'm recording this in May of 2014. No. <laughs> if you're just a regular gamer, no. Just hear me out on this. If you're still enjoying your PlayStation 3, your Xbox 360, hell, your PC, you still don't have any issues with them, you don't need to upgrade. And with these new systems coming out, unless there is a game right now that you need, you don't need to upgrade. And even that's a different thing because of course you don't need games to live but whatever it is a lot of people have been saying you know should i get an next gen system if i get an next gen system what should i get and i'll say this if you are asking those questions and all that right now you should just wait just save your money wait and who knows by the time you finally decide on a system you could probably get you know one in great condition used or there's going to be another price drop on these systems so it really all depends what you want, what your needs are, and what specifically is tailored for you. Now, I'll go ahead and run through the systems and whatnot. So first off, I'll say the first system I got, which was the last system to come out, was the Xbox One. I got it on launch, and I'll honestly say this. The first day I had the system, I actually turned my 360 back on, and I was playing on there that night. Not because the system was bad. Honestly, I think that all the systems are good in their own ways. But I was playing back on the 360 because not a lot of people had the system. I wanted to play with a friend of mine, and there were just features that were lacking. I'll be honest, there's only so much Dead Rising and Forza I was able to take. I got bored at one point, and I'll admit that. I got bored. And that's pretty much what's been going on this generation. Now, for people who are thinking I might be impatient and whatnot, I'm a patient person, and I fully understand. I completely understand that... Systems don't really pick up their momentum until, you know, maybe a year after they come out. I mean, thinking about it, there have been a few consoles that came out with the killer applications. The Xbox, or the original Xbox, not the Xbox One, the original Xbox came out with Halo. The original Wii came out with Twilight Princess. I'm trying to remember. I don't know if the PS2 had anything, to be honest. But then even last generation, um, no, the Wii was on there. I'm trying to really think about this. The Wii, I already mentioned that, but the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3, 
I don't remember either of those two having a killer application, like a game that you really need to go out and you're dying to play. I remember on the PS3, at least, um, Resistance came out at launch, but no one really talks about Resistance anymore. And honestly, I think it did well just because it was something to play. So <laughs> that's about all that's really happened. Honestly, these consoles, if you're getting them at any point right now, they're more of an investment, if anything. And it sounds silly talking about that like a game system, but at the same time, it's like these are expensive pieces of plastic and hardware. So they are investments in their own way. Honestly, myself, I picked out all the systems just so I could have experience with them, so I could see the evolution of the systems, and also so I could make content for you all. So if people were asking for opinions, if they wanted videos like this, I could do that. I could cover the updates of the systems. I could follow the evolution of them, as I said. That's why I wanted to get the next-gen systems. I was fully aware. I knew there weren't going to be many games that were going to come out within the first year or so. I knew I was going to get bored of them. I already knew that. I understood that. But I invested in them, you know, based on my decisions and whatnot. Now, as I said, if you're just a regular gamer, unless there's a reason for you to get it, there, you don't really need to invest in a new system right now. And some people might be saying, oh, well, you know, you should go out and just get a system. And of course, there's going to be a few bad games here and there. There's not really going to be that much good stuff and there's going to be droughts. But then when the good stuff comes out, you're going to have a system. I would have said that a few months ago. But hear me out on this as well. Now, the Xbox One, it's in stock everywhere. And before anyone says it's because the Xbox One's failing... The PlayStation 4, same thing. If you go to any store now, within the past month, I have not had a single issue finding a PlayStation 4. When I got my PlayStation 4 back in January, I didn't see another one in town for at least two months, I want to say. And then when I finally saw another one, there was only one in stock at the same store I went to pick up my own. But starting of April of this year, now, either less people are buying PS4s or Sony is pushing up production and they know what they're doing because now I see just as many PS4s in stores as I do Xbox Ones. So let's say in, you know, three months, there's going to be a game that comes out that you really want to play. You're not going to have an issue walking into Best Buy, picking up a PlayStation 4, picking up your game, paying for them, and then walking out the door. There's not going to be any issue finding a system. So you'll be good on that. As for people wanting them as an investment saying, oh, you know, I'll just get it and, you know, later good games are going to come out and everything. Not the shortest thing, just as an investment. I'll tell you this, you might feel like, now, me personally, if I don't touch my systems for a few weeks, I don't mind that much. I mean, hell, <laughs> I've been busy recently. I'm going to go into details with stuff later. I've been really busy, honestly, for the past year, year and a half, and... I mean, right now, it's getting to the point where if I play for longer than an hour at a time, that's a really long gaming session to me. That's how busy I've been recently with just everything going on. It's all good stuff. But what I'm trying to say is if I don't play my systems for like a month, that's, that's normal for me. So I still try and play here and there because I still like video games and whatnot. But if there's a system that doesn't get turned on for a month, that's just kind of normal. I know for a fact my PS3 hasn't been turned on for months. It just hasn't. Um, my Xbox One, last time I played that, I played that about two weeks ago. And that was just to play online with a friend who was playing Forza. So, Forza. I guess there's an invisible T in there. But yeah, that's what it's been. So, there's going to be droughts and all that. And I myself, I don't mind it that much. But I have another friend right now. He got his Xbox One on launch. And then a few months after he got his Xbox One, he built himself a gaming PC. He's never been a PC gamer, but he decided to do it. He just got his 750 Ti in there, and he loves the thing. And he is now selling his Xbox One because he said there's no games out to play. He hasn't touched it since his X since his, he built his PS. No, what am I trying to say? He hasn't touched it since he built his PC because he's almost exclusively on there now. And he's only using his Xbox for Netflix and YouTube, I think. I'm pretty sure YouTube is on there, I'm pretty sure. But he's only using it for video is what I'm trying to say. So with that logic, he's saying, you know, I'm just going to sell the system. I might lose out on a little bit. And when another game comes out that I'm interested in or some more momentum picks up or I can get a cheap one, I'll just get a system then. Until then, you know, at least he had an extended trial run with the system 
and he got to try out, you know, what he thought and whatnot. And also, another thing, if you all just wait another year for these systems, I promise you they're going to be a lot better than they are right now. The Xbox One, I can't do any media streaming on there. They are still patching things in. We had to get a patch for battery notifications. And actually, it doesn't even tell you anymore. It just shows you how much battery life you have. It doesn't tell you when the battery is going down or anything. We had to get several things patched in. For example, all my people across the pond over in the UK, they had to get 50 hertz Blu-ray support patched in. All the, X all the PlayStation 4 people might be happy about this. No! You cannot tell me, listen, I got a PS4 as well, you cannot tell me that the 360 and the Xbox One came out on launch, they played audio CDs, and they played MP3s, but for some reason, the PlayStation 4 needs that patched in. I don't care. Honestly, I don't care if it gets patched in a week after the console comes out, or a year after the console comes out. The point of the matter is, if the previous console came out with all these features... The new console should come out with the previous console's features and more. And that can also be debated because, in case you all don't know, the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One are not backwards compatible. The Wii U is, I'll get to that. They are not backwards compatible. However, they are trying to figure out ways around that, and it is because they decided to switch over to x86 architecture, which is completely different than what they were doing beforehand, so they couldn't put in, you know, native backwards compatibility and all that. Sony tried to do that with the PS3. They tried. The first run of PS3s had the Emotion Engine in them, like physically in them, so they had PlayStation 2 and 3 hardware, but it was way too expensive. The PS3 retailed for $600 when it was out, and those backwards compatible models were costing Sony a lot of money to make. So that's why they removed backwards compatibility later, because hardware backwards compatibility, which was the best they could do, was losing them a lot of money. But honestly, if you have to pick out a system right now, well, first off, I'm saying if, if you have to choose, if you have to force yourself to pick out something, you shouldn't be getting a system. Picking out a system should just be as easy as, oh, you know, all my friends are on this one, and this new game is out, and I really want to play it. I'm definitely getting this system. If you have, you know, that, I guess, natural attraction, I guess you can say, that is the system for you. However, if you're really indecisive and you're like, well, you know... Some of my friends are on the PlayStation 4, but some of them are on the Xbox One. And the Xbox One has Forza, but the PlayStation 4 is going to have extra content in it. But at the same time, I'm kind of in the middle between the two. And they both have some cool features, but they're both missing features that I want. Just wait on it. Seriously, just wait. And this is for people who only want one system. Just wait on it. The decision will make itself later. And even I said to the point... If you wait long enough, these consoles are going to drop in price. Now, that might be a few years from now, but still, PC and the other consoles are still going to be going on. These old consoles still have a few years of life to them, and if you have a... I know several people, they have a PC and they have consoles as well. You're going to be good on there. You should be okay. But honestly, going back to what I was trying to say, if you had to pick one console right now that you'd get the most value out of, that you might have the most fun with, and that would really have the best stuff right now, some that you're not going to, you know, let sit there and gather dust, unless you live in one of those homes that has, you know, like some type of dust filter in it, so technically nothing gathers dust. I'm being serious with this, I'm not trolling you all, but uh, get the Wii U, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm saying that laughing because, like, not many people would expect that. But no, I, I will say this. I might be a little bit biased due to the fact that I just got the system. This is the newest one I got, and I got it about a month ago, I want to say. But honestly, this system has the most games on it. It's probably the most stable of the other two right now. And it's going to have technically kind of the most features compared to those ones. So, you have stuff... Shut up, phone. You have stuff that needs to be patched in to these old systems, well, these new systems right here, that the old systems had. The Wii U has that already. It also has backwards compatibility. If I want to play a Wii game, I can just boot up into the VWii side of everything, and I'll be good to go. And hell, if you mod the VWii side of it, you can play GameCube games, and you can play emulators and anything like that. And also, guys, look at this, okay? I'm going to physically show you, all right? These are the games I have for the Xbox One and the PS4. Now, 
these are the games I felt like would be worth buying. And this is just my opinion on here. But I got two games for the PS4. I got four games for the Xbox One. Now, the PS4, granted, I do have more on it technically because I have PlayStation Plus and they give you a free game per month. But these are the physical ones I have right here, okay? The ones I could physically buy. Let's look at the PS4 first. Metal Gear Solid 5. I bought it because I'm a Metal Gear Solid fan. I liked it. But Ground Zeroes is a 30-minute demo. If that, if you speedrun it, me, myself, by, by the way, if anyone's interested, I did beat it. It took me 55 minutes without trying. 55 minutes on my first playthrough to clear through the game. Killzone Shadow Fall. This game is so boring, you all. I don't know what it is. It's so boring. Like, I can't, I haven't even beat the second level. I've owned this game since like January and I haven't gone past the second level. It's that boring to me. I just can't play it. I've tried it multiple times. The first level I think is cool. You see all the new stuff happen. And then after that, it's just so boring. In fact, Killzone, the reason why it sold that well, as well as it did, is because it was one of the only games available on the PS4 launch. You had some sports games. You had Knack, which wasn't that good of a game. I rented that. I finished it. Wasn't really that good. And you had Killzone. Out of all those, Killzone was probably the best one to pick up. And it wasn't even that good. Before the PS4 came out, I was saying this, and I'll reiterate it. For the first time, people are hyped for a Killzone game. <laughs> people are hyped for a Killzone game. Nobody ever gets hyped for that series. The series has always looked good, but it's always been kind of subpar. And there's people who are big fans of it, don't get me wrong. But it's not the best series out there. A lot of people can unanimously agree on that. And also, that game was sold with hype. And by the way, I will say, Sony proved that you can sell a console with only promotion and hype. When the PS4 came out, it didn't have that much good stuff going for it. Like, well, games. But aside from that, the promotions, they, they had several game sales. They had better promotional deals and whatnot than the Xbox One. And with that whole DRM thing, honestly, Microsoft just ha had such a terrible PR stunt with the Xbox One that people were buying the PS4 just based on hype. Like, there were several people. I know people that bought the PS4 with no games. I actually, I bought the PS4 with no games. I bought my PS4 alone. I didn't buy any games with it when I got it. Because I knew I was going to pick up some stuff later, but... <laughs> Sony did a good job on that. I'm just saying that. But anyways, let's go over to the Xbox One. Okay, I got Dead Rising 3 right here. I mean, Dead Rising is fun. I just didn't get that into it for some reason. I still need to finish this, though. Forza 5, good game, but only so much racing I can take in one sitting. Rise, I actually enjoyed this game. I really did, and the reason why I bought this is because I had nothing to play at the time. I knew it was going to be short. I still enjoyed it. In fact, I'm probably going to play through it a second time. This will probably be the first game on Xbox One I beat twice. Because I just, I liked it that much. And Titanfall right here, I will say, I know a lot of people that bought the Xbox One for Titanfall. Great game. You all know, I love me some Titanfall. It's a great game. I don't have any issues with it. However, I have not touched the Xbox One version for over a month, a month and a half. Because I've been playing it on PC. On PC, see, my thing was more, if I feel like playing with a controller, I'll play on the Xbox One. And I have friends on there, and with the PC, I also have friends on PC who play Titanfall, and I'll play with a keyboard and mouse. What I decided to do, probably about a month, month and a half, when I stopped playing this version, I hooked up my controller, my Xbox 360 controller, to the PC, and I realized, not only I'm comfortable with it on Titanfall, but I'm actually better on it. Like, m several times, I could be number one or two on the kill list on Titanfall PC with a controller, which is funny. So with that, I'm on PC, I get the better experience, I'm playing with a controller, so I don't, I don't really have a reason to play this one. Unless a friend of mine on the Xbox One says, hey, you want to play some Titanfall? I mean, sure, I'll pop it in my system, I'll play. But aside from that, I'm mostly playing on PC. That's mostly me, though. But if you don't have it on PC, and you don't want to play the 360 port, because the 360 port isn't really that good, I guess it would be worth it on Xbox One. The Wii U. See, there's a separate side for this. I have just as many games on the Wii U as I have on the PS4 and Xbox One combined. And there's even more games I want to get, but I decided to limit myself just due to the fact that it is a new system. I just got it. And technically, as I said, it's backwards compatible. So I have Wii games that work on my Wii U. <laughs> 
But yeah, I got, let's see, I got Zombie U, Super Mario 3D World, Pikmin 3, Super Mar New Super Mario Bros. Wii U with the Luigi expansion, Lego City Undercover, and uh, Wind Waker HD. So, I've been happy with it. I have just as many games on that system as I do on the other two systems. And again, that's only something that time will fix, okay? It's not going to be a permanent thing. It's not going to be one of those things where the Wii U will always have noticeably more games than the other two consoles combined. But right now, if you're just wanting a system, you're wanting to bring it home and just play and get as much value as you can out of it right now the Wii U might be the best option. <laughs> now, of course, if there are games that you really want on the other systems, I would say go with them, but you don't need one right now. Just wait until those games come out. For example, with the Xbox One, if I didn't get it on launch, I would have just waited until a new Halo game came out and I would have picked it up. The PS4, if I didn't get it early, and I wanted to get it early because there were several free games that I did want to play from PlayStation Plus. I also, you know, wanted to see the comparison and whatnot. And I'll be honest, I had this Xbox One and it was kind of boring. Like, again, PS4 fanboys might be rejoicing. But if I only had the PS4 for a few months, I would say I would have the same thing. And it was one of those issues where it's like the grass is greener on the other side. So, if I had only the PS4, I'd probably be like, oh man, you know, I really want to play the Xbox One. But when I had the Xbox One, I'm just like, man, you know, there's just stuff on the PS4 I just really want to play for some reason. So I have both those systems, and I'm good with them. And then for all the niche stuff, I have the Wii U, which I'm okay with. But, as I said, if you want it to be an investment, and you want to see the evolution of the system and whatnot, I would say, you know, get whatever system you want now. And you could choose which one you want. However, if you're looking for a system with the most value, the most games out, some you won't be bored with, I'd say go with the Wii U. But if you're indecisive about it, if there's nothing you're really wanting, and if you kind of want to wait for a price drop, don't get any system. It's as simple as that. So there's still people who are playing on the 360. There's still people who are playing on the PS3. I can't say that for the Wii because the Wii is going to be shutting down its online service, but I mean, hey. It is what it is, I guess. <laughs> so that's my little TLDW of this video. And, you know, I might do another, I don't know, a, a year checkup on it, you know, in another six months. But uh, until then, I guess the hat's going to be off. And I just got a haircut, too, so it's okay. But, oh, my God, I was getting hot in that hat, you all. I don't know if you all noticed, but I was getting hot in that hat. <laughs> Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you for watching, everyone, and, uh, you know, choose whatever you want to.